Task Force X is back to secure classified information for a war-torn island nation. Multiple teams of villains unofficially working for the U.S. government race to the capital of Cordo Maltese, each with their own powers, agenda, and personal trauma. What they find is something otherworldly. Everyone, welcome back to Clubhouse Movies Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Rubalcaba, joined by professional photographer, Mr. Abel Panetta. Today we are talking The Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. I really liked it, man. Yeah. Like- I had a lot of fun with this movie. I feel like there was a lot of emotion and a lot of good characters in it. Stallone yeah. played King Shark. I know. I was going to say, hey, we have a Groot moment, but it is a it is King Shark. And he goes by, what's his, what's his name? Ninyawe? Ninyawe? I don't know. Ninyawe? Something. He likes. He goes like this. He's like, <laughs> hand? Friend. <laughs> friend. Bird. <laughs> Tasty friend. <laughs> Off the com. New dumb friends. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, they really couldn't have gotten anybody else. I know, because, <laughs> I mean, when you make fun of Sylvester Stallone, that's how you make fun of Sylvester Stallone. He totally, like, he, it just went full circle the way he took everybody making fun of him and made it into a character, and now he's getting paid for it. Yeah, and uh, I don't know about you, but I was lucky enough to actually see this in IMAX opening night. No. And, uh, we, you know, we had a little incident happen last week so we had to push but yep. here we are back on time back oh, in yeah. track but yeah i saw this in theaters man and the the sound quality and the audience reaction to oh. like that first like suicide squad team yeah. getting decimated was awesome dude it, i bet it was so ridiculous it was very james gunn like very james gunn and i appreciate the hell out of that there was a lot of awes in the theater when weasel came out oh weasel and then he That's died so weird <laughs> oh i know when he dude when he died that i was like man what a tease and speaking of like that whole team getting decimated i think my favorite death was nathan fillion's but he never died <laughs> he, <laughs> he was just kicking and screaming on the ground <laughs> and you saw his arms his arms didn't even his, fall <laughs> his arms were just getting like bone swiss cheesed in the air. The fact Why that didn't he so carry machine guns with his arms? I don't know. He was smacking and poking eyes and smacking guns down. <laughs> he, was, he was just doing some like his three stooge routine. <laughs> Dude, and you know his character was, you know they created him, uh, James Gunn created his character specifically for this movie just to give him a spot in the movie, right? There was a detachable kid. Well, no. The, I mean, this wasn't like he just brought him in. Oh. Like he just was like, yeah, oh, I'm going to yeah. add it just, just as, for just Nathan Fillion. There he goes. Yeah. He's losing <laughs> his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Nathan Fillion to do that. <laughs> but his arms didn't fall, and I don't think they registered him as dead. Okay, so so he's he's just there. He's going to be the amputee then. Yeah, I but I, I think all the, the everyone from that first team was pretty funny, and uh, yeah, it was good. And like javelin dude, like what the hell? Like what the hell, javelin dude? I'm going to give you my javelin because like, like <laughs> it is the javelin of javelins. She's like, but it's the thing you got to use it for. Use it for what? And he dies. <laughs> And she looks at him with fond eyes and then shakes him. What? What do I use it for? <laughs> fond and eyes. Yeah. <laughs> if her eyes could fondle him, she did. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, so it was, I mean, I like that. Also, did isn't it crazy how Viola Davis makes you feel bad for the bad guys because she's such a dickhead? Yeah. I there, There's a lot of like internet people that actually say that she's actually the true villain of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. I mean. Because like everyone's really like good guys ultimately in the end except for her who yeah her and and who's the freaking who's the douchebag freaking um mr peace maker peacemaker oh peacemaker good john cena john's john cena (laughs) john cena (laughs) (laughs) that was perfectly (laughs) tight i actually did my hand thing when you did that yeah, actually, he played a really Dude. weird ass peacemaker, Dude. and like John Cena really sold it, especially that scene yeah. where he tried to eat the rat catcher too, Dude. and then he came out in his tidy whities. Dude, like it, it <laughs> tidy looks like he stuffed really? the whole baby into his underwear. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's no baby's fist. They got a whole toddler and put him in his underwear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. S- speaking of which, like that scene where they raid the uh, the village. Yeah, but they didn't know that they were actually good villagers. Yeah, it was the. It wasn't I was getting a spoof of like predator vibe from that. Where, yeah, where they took out the village, but like I remember thinking like none of these guys look like revolutionaries, and he had like yeah, the woman like, doing doing like her laundry and like, like making pancakes. A dude <laughs> sleeping, and then he got freaking poked to death. Yeah, um, you got was... a dude that got up. Why? I, I don't know why he would open the <laughs> the freaking shade he, like, as he, he got he, up. He, and like just life of dong. He was like hoping for a life of Brian moment where when you started <laughs> worshiping him in his dong. <laughs> <laughs> that that was it was all bad. I'm glad he got he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> he should have been the only one, dude. It's like put it away. 
<laughs> Weirdo. <And> then, <laughs> he's, he probably broke out of prison. God. He's like, I am free. Now my dong shall be free. Did you see the first one? I did, but I can't tell you that I remember any of it, man. Well, I think this was a good this, sequel. This could have been number one for me, and I would have been like, hey, this is cool. You know what, though? They, I, like I said, cool. this was a good sequel because um, really the two, the, the two and a half, I'm going to say half, mm-hmm. of the best characters were in this movie. The, the, the half being Boomerang, who died in the first like, like five minutes. Yeah. But, but when he died, you felt bad for him, and you actually kind of felt bad for Harley for having known him. Yeah, you yeah, that I mean? was weird. I was like at odds with myself, feeling bad for these bad guys. Yeah, you know. But I really felt bad for Captain Boomerang when he died, and then yeah. and then you know we the thing about the show we don't worry about spoilers. I felt really bad when um, Rick Flag died at the end, and like he was being choked out by John Cena. And I remember, or did he? Well, John Cena is definitely coming back. Well, yeah, I mean he has his own show that just yeah. wrapped filming. But like Rick Flag died, and I just remember like thinking when he was like choking him, like say something cool because like I know. he's probably gonna kill you. And then like as the, and even in my brain, I'm like, what could he say? What could he say? I know. What could he say? <laughs> and then he said like Peacemaker. What a joke! I'm like, ah, you I know what? Like, that was no, okay. That was okay. I was like, I'll take it. I couldn't think of anything better. I I couldn't either. I was like, I was like, ah, eh, eh, okay. I do. I forget where I read. I'm actually trying to go through my stories here. I read that. Um, that James Gunn planned to bring him back. So I don't think he's... Well, di- they're, they're multiversing it, too. Okay. So everyone can come back. I mean, Michael Keaton's Batman is back. Yes. So if that's a thing, then like definitely uh, could Rick Flagg back. is coming back. Rick Flagg. No joke, when I first heard his name, I was like, I was like, did they say Rick Flair? <laughs> <I was like, laughs> Rick Ruby. Dude, yeah. I had to freaking like rewind that, sp- that thing because I watched it at home. And I was like... <laughs> Nice. It was Rick Rick Flag. Yeah, Rick, Rick Flag, the leader of the Suicide Squad. But yeah, it was nice when he was back, and it was nice that that yeah. Harley was back. Uh, to me, it was. A I kind of got sequel. tired. Of, yeah, I, I got kind of tired of Harley too, just because you know, freaking accent just bugs the bejesus. But out we ain't me. got none accents. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't got none, <laughs> Mister J. We ain't got none. <laughs> Actually, I was all you all you American girls love accents. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice that she like shot her boyfriend like the, right in point the blank chest of the chest yeah yeah like square dead little pinprick of a bullet mm-hmm. and he bled out so good yeah that was that was pretty good actually I liked everyone in this movie there yeah, really especially I I saw the notes here polka dot man yeah polka dot man <laughs> I was think he awesome stole the show man I liked uh, I liked how I kept seeing his mom that was that was weird everywhere like in the dance scene like he's on the dance floor <laughs> in in that weird mind guys like favorite club yeah you know <laughs> he's dancing with his mom in slow-mo to techno i didn't see falcon and the winter soldier but there's like that meme of zemo in the dance club like just like old man dancing Dude, that was <laughs> but like to me this th- like <laughs> how did how did we get two nightclub memes well because like, you <laughs> have we have james gunn in here he probably gave a nod to some of those directors i mean james gunn james gunn is like notorious for well, giving nods and for putting actors from other movies and you know, he's like, kind of like Adam Sandler. Hey, I like you guys. Yeah. Stick around. Yeah, and, and like, and speaking of nightclub, did you see that? Well, I don't know if you caught it, but the actress that played Mantis in Guardians of the Galaxy was right there. Like, yeah, she was center, center stage. Dancing. Yeah, yeah. I uh, was like, oh, hey, that's Mantis. <laughs> Do you notice it when it I happened? Like, I was like, what's up, Mantis? <laughs> yeah, but she had regular size eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, which was even weirder somehow. <laughs> yeah, and Michael Rooker from the you know, from the Guardians of the Galaxy was there also. Yeah, got his head blown off. He was in there. And then you had what's his face? I forget. He's so he's Michael Rooker's number two in um Guardians of the Galaxy. He's the skinny guy with James that, Gunn. No, no, the the guy that eventually Sean in, Gunn. Sh- is it Sean Gunn? Sean Gunn. Yeah, Sean Gunn. He talks crap about polka dot guy. Yeah, and he was <laughs> also the weasel. Because he also plays um Yeah, he does a lot of that kind of acting. He also plays uh a rocket. Like he's yep. rocket on set. He's yeah, he's uh he's CG rocket. You know, and I was thinking about like the predator nod when they're in the thing, the woman they went to go save or the the Freedom Fighter woman, Alice Braga, she yeah. was also in Predators. Really? Yeah. She was the sniper girl who who uh who made it out with Adrian Brody. Dude, I do not because I hadn't that. seen her since then. I haven't seen I can't well this awesome quality image right here. I'm they didn't at. give her a big bubble for some reason. They got, they gave Javelin a big bubble. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. Like, look, I like, even put in his camera. You yeah, can't see that. they they gave Javelin a big bubble, but not but not poor Alice Braga, who actually survived. Yeah, <laughs> who was actually That's p- pivotal so to the plot. And Polka Dot Man didn't even get a big bubble. Yeah, well, I mean, he's kind of not. 
Like I feel like he is becoming more well known because of this movie. But no, but no here's the, the actual thing: actor. the actual actor, Polka Dot Man, Comes is, out a is, lot of stuff. is a DC staple. He was in The Dark Knight. He was the guy who had the Rachel Dot. He was the he was the yes. guy that shot in the leg who had the Rachel Dawson, yeah. thing, who may or may not have been like a Riddler clone, like Ooh. or a precursor. Or, and he was also in the show Gotham as one of the the proto uh, I, Jokers. I didn't watch that show, but he you know he's DC like royalty okay. by now. I can't um, watch those shows when I get just like the. It's like I want to see Batman, but I don't get to see Batman. You know, like Gotham. I was like, I don't get to see. Batman. You didn't even get to Batman. see Joker, and Joker was in it a bunch of times. It's crazy. It's all crazy to me. Yeah, I felt bad for the birds, but then one of the birds got uh, revenge. Yeah, uh, right. Ate, like ate, ate like Michael Rooker's brain quickly too. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like you. You taste good. He ate Michael Rooker's brain, but then that like, like you general guy, the general guy, killed all the birds for some reason. He torched them all. Yeah, that guy's a douchebag. But I like Starro. Starro? Starro, the main villain of the movie, or the giant star? Oh, that was his name. That was the name of the star thing. Yeah, they even called him the, Starro, the Starro the, Project. The slang term for buttholes. <laughs> no, as the peacemaker. <laughs> so. So eloquent, eloquently said. <laughs> I like how that went. That's where his brain went straight to. Such a dick. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like this. This is this is him. So, starfish. Uh, is that a slang term for buttholes? Uh, mm. Any uh, correlation? No. <laughs> <laughs> now it makes me think of that stupid overhead projector. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's a, it's you don't a, use that anymore. Hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks so smug after that. Yeah, he's like, "All right, yeah this this whole th- this whole movie was it was there was a lot of ha ha moments, so, like a lot of funny." So, if there were two directors that we don't like, do you know who they are? Two directors we don't like. Yeah, we always mention it. We always mention in our show two directors who one one we mention more often. M. Night than Night Shyamalan. That's one of them. Yeah, I definitely don't like. So that the guy. other one maybe you might not get right away, but what's that? If I, if I, I like. I, I'm gonna disagree. I like Taika. Okay, that that that's where I was going with this. I'm not gonna say I I did like Taika. I liked Taika Watiti, and I wrote here Ta- Watiti versus Shyamalan. The thing about it is, I think Shyamalan sold his soul to the devil because <laughs> Somehow his he movie gets his movies suck, hit. and he can't act. Oh my god, it's the worst. And he's always the same actor in all of his movies. Yeah. And like to me, when I saw this. I saw Taika Waititi, and he played the Rat Catcher one, but he did a good job. He did a great he job. He did a great job. And Have you a, seen him in Jojo Rabbit? No. Dude, he does a great him, job But I hear too. he does a good job, and I like Taika Waititi. I saw his first movie, which is uh, what, he, what We Do in the Shadows, the yeah. original. Yeah. He was so funny. And he, he is so funny as- um. He's just a funny person, as, uh, dude. Korg in, in the- Oh, my God. In dude. the Marvel movies? Yes. Dude, he was so good. And like to me, like Taika Waititi, the guy can make movies. The guy can act. He is. He can who, write. He yeah, you're right. He is M, who M Night Shyamalan is trying to be. Wants to be. And he doesn't even have to add a twist. He doesn't. He's just like, funny. <laughs> and then you think like, oh, it's because and he directed like, parts of the Mandalorian, which was awesome. Yeah, he was the freaking robot. He yeah, pl- he played. Yeah, the, he played. He played, the, ex- a, he played a, the espresso machine from the Moss Cantina. Yeah, a freaking <laughs> a recurring role. <laughs> Rec- like. He, he he played the espresso machine that they pulled from the cantina He's and like, made it into a robot. Now. Yeah, I oh, I man. think that Taika Waititi is really good, and I think I think, I think we're Taika crushing. Yeah. Taika, if you ever see this dude, just have us on stage on set. I will pick something up. <laughs> and and to me, M Night Shyamalan, like, come on, man, like, just just to take some notes from Taika Waititi yeah. as to what he does. Acting is reacting. The guy died a heroin overdose, and I felt bad for him. Yeah, I think if M Night Shyamalan <laughs> died of a heroin overdose, I in would a movie, clap. <laughs> everyone would clap. People, what a twist! <laughs> everyone would laugh. People laughed and clapped when the guy kept showing up in old, because yeah. you see him and you're like, you know who he is. Yeah. But here's the thing: you know who Taika Waititi is. He's not doing like a cameo. He is acting. He yeah. is a part of this movie. Yeah, yeah, and it, that's the see, and that is the difference. Because if you want to, if you, I mean, I guess Taika Waititi and you have M. Night Shyamalan. I, I, God, I can't even say the guy's name correctly. We so, can't say either. That, that, that's the point. Yeah. You can't say either one of their names right. But, <laughs> I can't even say that sentence yeah. right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, we so, ain't got none. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you want to compare like that kind of uh, like just showing up and giving a nod to yourself, be self-serving, you got to throw in Stan Lee. Stan Lee was more... Akin to do the same thing. Yeah, Stan. That, okay, so but he still did it better than, than yeah, M Night. So dude. to me, 
Stan Lee and like Alfred Hitchcock, who I think M. Night is trying to emulate. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock, he'd seem like late for a bus or something. And they're yeah. oh, there's the Hitchcock, obligatory Hitchcock cameo. Yeah, it's like, it's like when you hear the title of the movie in the movie. But the thing about Stanley also, very charismatic. Yeah. Excelsior. Yeah, he's like he was like a cool dude. Dude, yeah. Oh man, it's and, so good. And and like I, I think if I like talk to Stanley about comics, he'd probably be like, oh, blow my mind. But yeah. if I talk to M. Night Shalomalan about horror movies, he'd probably bore the out of me. Oh my god, man. <laughs> Definitely would rather talk to Rob Zombie about horror movies. Yeah. He would blow my mind the way that Stan Lee would. I I saw the <laughs> I just had to like go there and start bashing like M. Night Shyamalan in this one. It's, I wrote it in the he's notes. Been, if you don't know, he's been a running joke since we launched. <laughs> I, I, I think maybe we'll so talk about him later because I think I mentioned him in somewhere in the uh, in the shop talk. But we'll get back to that. <laughs> I liked. I liked. Uh, I need to stop saying I like so much. But anyway, Idris Elba. It's a val- you're a valley girl. It's okay. <laughs> like totally whatever. Uh, Idris Elba really good as Bloodsport. And I re- dude, he I actually really- yeah, we b- looks like we both wrote a note on that. And I was like, uh, I wrote, I think I wrote a uh, Idris Elba over Will Smith. Fight me. <laughs> just kidding, I didn't see that. <laughs> but I just said, uh, just gonna say it. Idris Elba did a way better job as Bloodsport. Well, whether they were not the same character, Will Smith played yeah. Deadshot. Deadshot, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, they, but probably, they, they, they probably were, were the same character in the like original script. And, yeah. and somewhere on, there's an answering machine voicemail like, like of, of Will Smith's agent, like, hey, you can do Suicide Squad 2 or what's going on? Yeah. You know, but like, you know, and he's like, no, nah, I'd rather do Gemini Man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did that at 60 <laughs> frames per second for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Yeah. But anyway, the, uh, the blood sport part that I really like was his. Uh, his four times like Superman landing or Dude. no superhero <laughs> landing, where like I actually thought he was gonna die, like when he yeah. was like falling, and then like he just landed on his feet, super well, landing. He's, like Idris Elba is not a young dude, even when he yeah. was running with just a tank top, even though and he looks freaking, twenty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, like he runs like an old man. Yeah, did you see that scene when they're gonna go rescue Harley, and he just puts on the helmet and the little gauntlet, two gauntlets I guess, and he's running. He's he does such an old man run, and I'm like. He runs the way I go to sit down. I'm like, oh, God, the pain. <laughs> Old dude. <laughs> yeah, but I, I digress. I, yeah, Idris Inter- Elba played a really good main character. Um, but this And you movie, liked him for it. You liked him for it. This movie had a lot of good beats to it. Uh, it. It, to me, was a good sequel to The Suicide Squad. People say, like, oh, do you have to see The Suicide Squad to have, like, understood this? Mm-hmm. No, but I recommend you do. Yeah, and, I, like, that brings me back to another argument I made. I felt like some of it, even though it was a long movie, I felt like some of the sequences were a little rushed or interjected. Like, for instance, the backgrounds of the, of the characters... Because I, I get I, I get it. They're uh, trying to explain what who these characters are if you have not seen the first one. Because let's face it, most of the people haven't seen the first one. Um, and if you haven't, just go watch it. I just felt like those were a little too like, ah, let's let's just make sure we interject that real quick. Like the polka dot guy, freaking the thinker and you know, all these other random guys. Yeah, because if you saw the first one, the the okay, so there's always the the talk of the legendary air cut. Yeah. The cut that we saw was the studio cut slash the trailer park cut. And I say trailer park because it was actually the people who make movie trailers cut yeah. this movie. So yeah. like the first The act, whole movie felt like a trailer. The first act of it is a trailer. And like the introductions are like dead shot. And you see him like looking cool. Like it's like, extra. Like, yeah. Yeah. This one here superseded that and just like actually kind of like just had quick introductions. Like, yeah. I, uh, oh, what's his name? I forgot. The guy who betrayed him at the beginning, uh, Davidson, what was his name? Oh, yeah. He, Blackguard... We didn't ever knew what he his role was or what. Yeah, he was just a douchebag. But <laughs> he was. He, he reminded me of Stevo. <laughs> oh man, douchebag! Oh my, central. Uh, yeah. I tried to actually say Stevo just now, and douchebag came out like inadvertently. <laughs> <laughs> you meant to say Stevo Central? Yeah, <laughs> Stevo Central. But yeah, and Steve-o I'm glad sexual. he got shot in the face. Oh like, yeah, like right off the get go. That great. was good, actually. That was so satisfying. It was grotesque. If it was super satisfying. If it wasn't for uh, what's his name, Black. Uh, Blackguard. Blackguard's betrayal. The mission may have actually been like super smooth and super successful. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it would have been like, very, God, we say like too much. It would have been very successful. Like, you know, whatever. We need a light counter. Mm-hmm. You know what they had on Loveline? A, oh, no. uh, a basically counter. Where, oh my God. Where basically? people would call and say, people yeah. say basically, and they would ring a, del- a bell. Yeah. I'm going to buy a bellhop bell. Every time we say, every time we, time we say like, 
We're gonna that way pop. we can catch it in post. Uh, yeah. Boom. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll just count it and put it on the thing. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I, I'm going to buy a bellhop. So note to self when editing. Bell, hop, bell. All right. So that's that. Uh, you want to get into letter grades? You got any more yeah. hot, hot shots with this one? No, other than John character seen as a douche. But yeah. <sighs> yeah, he actually was a douche. But here's the thing, though. He was the only one who wasn't fleshed out. We don't know why he was such a douche. John Cena? In a way, we did because his dad taught him to be a douche. And and to be completely honest with you, like he may, he may have had a point. Like, that's the thing. Because... Yeah. He, you know, it's going to look bad. And, you know, once CNN gets like that, it's going to be like, come on, man. You know, he had a point, uh, and that was the mission, to destroy the evidence of, of Star that, That's true. And, that's true. And, you know, if, if, if that really had happened in real life, they would send the military in to stop that from getting out. Yeah, obviously. You, you know what I mean? So, like, he had a point. But this is a movie. But Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> and Rick Flagg had a point, too, and I was really sad yeah. to see him go. And we needed and, those. We and needed I was sad too. to see... Uh, it was sad to see the Suicide Squad break up after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like at the end, they kind of come out like as like, oh, hey, we're good guys. Good guys. Well, they they got they all got pardoned as far as I can tell yeah. because they actually that's did what have the, the disc. That was a deal. The Rick Flag disc. But anyway, I'm going to give this one an A. Oh. I'm going to say it's an almost perfect movie and it combines just enough humor and heart and action to make this an epic watch. The movie has something for everyone. The only minus is the poor birds. So to me, like kind of like you okay. said earlier, it doesn't necessarily have the rewatchability. Yeah. And I don't think like I'm going to catch a lot of little nods, except for the one where Rick Flagg is wearing the Bugs Bunny t-shirt. Yeah, um, I saw that, but I didn't get the reference. The reference is it says uh, something about... Um, to the effect of when, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Oh, or, or if there's a problem, make another. Th- yeah. And, but it was, uh, it's like Bugs Bunny dressed like Superman, but it's like the nod is like Mickey Mouse screwed him over. Oh, I see what you mean. So now you move to the Bugs Bunny. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So just good. little things like that, little things like, like you said. Good job, like, James Gunn. Like, yeah, I see I, it. I, James Gunn, my, my <laughs> tip it. of the hat. <laughs> that uh, was uncoordinated, by the way. We just kind of did that. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. No, I did the hat, hat tip too. Okay, tip of the hat, yes. wag of the finger. No, 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 no wag of the finger. Tip of the hat. Just a tip of the hat uh, to you, James Gunn. I think you made a good movie. And uh, now for my letter grade, I'm actually going to say I give this one a B-. minus. Uh, I feel like I explained it pretty well. I said, while this felt like a wholly new movie compared to the original, I found it difficult to thoroughly enjoy because some sequences felt rushed and rough like the intros, intros and all those things of the characters. I also could not get past the constant feeling that this was a Guardians of the Galaxy redo in rated R. All that said, this movie is enjoyable despite its quirks. Just, I just recommend it. Yep. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good recommendation there for The Suicide Squad, the 2021 sequel. Yes. I am your host, Mark Rubalcaba, for the Clubhouse Movies podcast. Joined by Mr. Abel Panetta. We will catch you next time.